Raf, it's great to have you here at the Australian Ballet. Welcome to DanceX as well. Welcome back to Melbourne. Melbourne loves you. Well, an absolute joy that <laughs> I am here, that we're here, that it's finally all happening. I know, finally. You know, it's a gift. So thank you for having us. Of course. So tell us a bit about Ab Intra. Look, Ab Intra means from within in Latin. Mm. And since I'm Spanish, I've, you know, for many years got Don't forget where you come Latin from. Latin <laughs> surnames and making it sound all abstract, but actually it's from within. And I work, I created a, it in 2018, so four years ago. Um, it had its premiere at home in Sydney. And after that, we took it across Australia. You know, we tour mm -hmm. to smaller places, to bigger places, everywhere. Then in 2019, Intra had its uh, European premiere in Austria. We also took it to Poland, to Finland, and then to Barcelona, my mm. hometown, which was like an amazing feeling. Of course. Then the world changed for us. But the very beautiful thing about this work is that um, it's, uh, it's the world that took us away back on tour internationally this year again post. Oh good. Um, so you just bombs. press the pause button for a second. We press the pause button for a second and then we toured it um, across France for five weeks in March. Mm. So it's so wonderful that we're able to perform it in Melbourne mm. for your audiences together with you on stage again. And that's you know where it all started 2018. Yeah great. And so when you're creating what is the process like? So he here we have Ab Intra. It was created in 2018. It's being performed now. But in the process, what is your process like? Is it all here and, you know, anxiety and <laughs> trying to get it out? Or is it like a really fluid experience as you crack your knuckles? <laughs> <and> <laughs> Look, with Ab Intra, it's interesting because I tried something new. And the work started with a series of improvisations where I ask the dancers to be in the moment, to be present with each other, mm -hmm. to listen to each other, to feel each other, to follow their instincts, their impulses, their visual responses. While we were filming it, mm -hmm. of course, um, and to be open from within, which is where it all came from, to the unexpected. So if we are present, if we're open, to each other, if we're vulnerable, if we allow things to happen in that moment in time, what's going to come out of it? And it was incredible. And it was something that I thought, oh, this may take us nowhere, you know? But hey, I've got five days to try things out um, and I'm gonna do this. And what I did also was I asked the dancers to immediately after, anonymously, write down in these post-its that we had, any thoughts, any feelings, any sensations, anything that came to their head. Mm -hmm. But it was important that it was anonymous because I didn't want people, people to be self-conscious or to, to, to think that they were going to be judged for whatever had been written mm -hmm. there and then. And, I, and we collected all of those writings, which were pages and pages of little post-its. Mm -hmm. And it was an incredible process because that really was the trigger, it was the seeds that really inspired me to create the work. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly discovered this new way of putting something together, which you know you, you will see, and ultimately it's dance, it's movement, it's everything that I'm about. But it comes from a very emotional place of a moment in time with a specific group of people mm. that allow themselves to open from within. Tell us about the music to have intro. Yeah, I decided to bring two of my favorite l music styles together. Colliding, coexisting, uh, clashing, mm. coming together in this work. One is the contemporary classical mm -hmm. with powerful strings. I love a string and I use it a lot. And then another one, the um, exquisite, sophisticated um, electronic. Um, sound world mm -hmm. and there was a piece of music that I loved that was existing and it's called Presence and it's by Latvian composer Petris Vasks and it's a cello concerto um, with full symphony big music mm -hmm. uh, played by the soloist Sol Gaveta she's Argentinian and it's one of those pieces that you just have on repeat mm -hmm. and that you think oh will I be able one day to you know like 
put uh, like choreograph to this piece of music that I love so much and I have so much respect for. Mm -hmm. And then, so I had this piece of music and then there's Nick Wiles, he's Australian composer. We've worked together a few times, but not that many by 2018. And I said to him, look, I would like you to uh, compose the rest of the music, but I want it to feel like one. Mm -hmm. You know, and I want you to love this other piece of music that I've chosen because otherwise yeah. it's probably not going to work. Yeah. So uh, Nick beautifully composed this other world um, that exists in in Ab Intra where he actually records instruments and he will bring, you know, musicians into the studio and will record like whatever, you know, vi violin, piano, trumpet whatever he decides he wants to use, and then he will use that to compose the electronic music, okay. which is great. So it's like a natural sound that was firstly created, yeah. you know, by a musician, but then it's made into this electronic score that exists. So it's, it's a journey of contemporaneity and classicism in one, uh, yeah. which is perfect for me. Great. You know, great in marriage. Way. Yeah. And so in terms of the canon of your work, hmm. like... If you, I'm not getting too existential, don't worry. <laughs> but in terms of the canon of your work, where does Ab Intra sit? You know, how do you look back in 2018 and think, okay, this is where it's going, or this is where it sits in the rest of my creations? Look, one of the things that I remember is that it was a nightmare to make. Huh? Sometimes it's the best work. <laughs> I hope it's true, because right now I'm making another work and it's a nightmare. Yeah. So, you know, like, if, if the rule works, but it really wasn't easy because of the way that it was made in chunks, you know, from one year to the next, dancers coming and going because it happens mm -hmm. and so on, mm -hmm. going on tour and then having to return. It wasn't an easy mm -hmm. process. And then I remember, so I had to fight a lot to continue the energy of the work. And also there was this element that I brought into it, which was this, let's improvise for five days for 45 minutes at a time Oof. sometimes. So that was intense. Oof, you are yeah. a taskmaster. Like master. hardcore, you know, <laughs> with different groupings of people and so on, and then thinking that that would, you know, be useful. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, but it was an experiment for me. So for me, I feel there was a before and an after this okay. work. Oh, yeah. And a before where I learned a lot more about me, about how to collaborate with the artists that I work with, mm -hmm. how to bring them th into the process. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I felt that I grew. And it's a work that I'm very proud of. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's some works that you create that you want to look back to, and some others that you want to move, off, move yeah. on from. And it's still growing. It's interesting. It's a wor work that because it's with us and has been with us since 2018, I'm still playing with it when I can. And when new dancers have been com become part of the process and learning the work, mm. we found new things and new textures. Mm -hmm. So for me, personally, in my own choreographic journey, mm -hmm. it was a, like a, some, an important work. Yeah, good. So DanceX, there are nine companies, hmm. including yours. I'm not asking you to choose a favorite, but whose work haven't you seen that you are really looking forward to seeing? Or what are, you, what are you looking forward to experiencing? Oh, look, you know, exactly what you said. It's, it's such a gift to be able to come together and showcase the vast talent, you know, choreographic talent, dance talent, mm. all together in these two programs. Mm. You know, like mm. it's just amazing. So it's really, really hard to to choose because a favorite or anything like that because I haven't seen a lot also. Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing too. Yeah, you know, agreed. for two years we've been deprived of, of watching dance, of watching each other. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I, I, I'm that choreographer that loves dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know that not everyone does, you know, because not everyone does, but I like will go to as many shows as I can. Yeah. So this for me is heaven, yeah. you know, to be able to see all that match. I, I'm really intrigued because Lucy Guerin is doing a duet um, with two incredible performers and um, Samantha Hines and uh, with um, Lillian Steiner mm -hmm. and the last duet that I saw a few years ago with also two female performers by Lucy Guerin blew me away so much so that I talked about it for years <laughs> you know it was like I came to Melbourne to see 
like a weekend of dance and I you mm. know, run from one theater to the next. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it was Dance Massive. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it was Lillian Steiner and uh, Melanie Lane. And mm -hmm. I was just like blown away. And the fact that, that Lucy's making and you've commissioned, mm -hmm. that new work is being commissioned as part of this program also. I'm intrigued by, oh my God, what are these two monsters? Yeah of dance yeah. and incredible choreographer are going to offer us. Yeah. So I'm intrigued by that and then by the fact that we're all together and that energy is going to, you know, be happening right now here in Melbourne, great. in Australia. Well, it's great to have you here. Can't wait to see your work on stage. Thank you for having us, David. It is really such a privilege to be able to be sharing this stage with your company and with all of the other companies. And I hope that this is the first of many. Yeah, great. Thanks, Raf. Thank you.